My name is Mark with National Semiconductor and I'm here to talk to you today about the LMH 1983 video and audio clock and sync generator chip. I'm using the SD1983 EVK evaluation board and this board takes as its input a video sync input. I'm using an NTSC black burst signal from my video sync generator. It extracts HV and F from that signal, which it provides to the LMH 1983 clock generator chip. From those inputs, the clock generator chip generates a 27 megahertz output, a 148.5 megahertz output, 148.35 megahertz, and a 24.576 megahertz clock output. And for each of those clock outputs, there's also a timing signal indicating top of frame. What I'm showing on the scope here is my F input that's coming from my sync generator and then the lower trace is the top of frame signal for the first output and I have them set up now so that they're lined up and you can see the clock frequency that's being generated for that is the 27 megahertz clock frequency. If I change the phase relationship between these two and that might happen by a change in my reference that's coming in then you'll see that the clock signal will move for me and I have two ways that the part can deal with that. I can either do what's called a crash lock in which case the output timing signals change instantaneously which will give me a very rapid lock but it's liable to disrupt any downstream video equipment. The other alternative is through what's called a drift lock which shifts the clock frequency so that it'll skew the timing signals into alignment. So first I'm going to demonstrate the crash lock by putting in an offset to my video signal timing. And I'm going to put in a 10 line offset. And when I apply that, oh, I'm, I've left it in the wrong state. When I apply that with the crash lock, it immediately shifts over to a 10 line offset. If I go back again to a zero line offset, it switches back immediately. So here's the 10 line offset. Now, if I put it into drift lock mode, as I had it earlier, then for drift lock, what will happen is now instead of just switching instantaneously it's going to skew the clock frequency in this case it's going to skew it up which is going to result in the timing signal slowly moving back until it regains lock when it's realigned with the input f sync the clock frequency will go back to 27 megahertz so i'm going to apply that now telling it to go back to a zero line offset and when i apply my timing signal drifts across. When it gets across to zero, my clock frequency goes back to 27 megahertz, and I'm back in lock again. To learn more about the difference between crash lock and drift lock and many of the other features that this chip has, you can explore it at www.national.com/sdi. Thank you very much.